It's 2019. I had recently lost the first love of my life to a heart disease that he didn't tell me about. One minute, I'm forgetting my car keys. I'm running back to the front door, stealing extra kisses. And the next, he was gone forever. I spent the rest of the year alone trying to recover. After six months of hardcore grieving, my best friend Asia and I had 2020 all planned out. It was gonna be our year! <laughs> but that meant meeting and fucking new people. I was beyond anxious. I was never the kind of girl that guys hit on, on, you know, on the street, never at nightclubs, not even at the gas station, but mostly because I fucking hate those places and it shows on my face. <laughs> but dive bars? I love dive bars. <laughs> that was my happy place. I love the grime, the whiskey, the conversations. And tonight, that is where we are going. But I'm still nervous. Asia cuts me off. Girl, oh my God, just throw some shit in the bag. Do your makeup at my house. We can pregame. Marco's coming. He's driving. Just get your ass over here. She always knows how to get me. Pregame and a chauffeur. <laughs> I've regained my optimism and my courage, and I'm packing my bags and heading for a weekend in beautiful Hollister, California. <laughs> but that's not where we're drinking tonight. Think of the smallest town that you know. Put a specific festival, a discount outlet, and a Costco, and you have Gilroy, California, the city of garlic. This was my hunting ground. It's about 15 minutes from where I grew up, and we both didn't want to run into any exes, so like obviously trade in those guys for some Gilroy boys. There isn't much going on there, like maybe three bars, and one of them is at this diner called The Longhouse, where my family and I used to take in meals in between church services. I had no idea it got lit on Saturdays. <laughs> but we didn't go there, because I could not be looking for sin where I once ate holy meals with my family. <laughs> so we chose the barriest bar we could find, the bartender's union. Shiny pavement floors, white walls, darts, pool, and millennium jams just cranked all the way up. This was my sanctuary. This is where I will commit all my sins, forgive me, Father. And all I need to warm up is like four shots of Jameson and like the perfect song. <laughs> then he walked in. Raiders hat, all black Ray-Bans, black leather moto jacket, relaxed black denim jeans, black classic uh, Chuck Taylors. I turned to my friend who also notices this guy and we immediately weigh in on his outfit and the fact that he has not removed his sunglasses <laughs> and it is nighttime. <laughs> Our murder mystery brains assign him as maybe not safe. Uh, because what psycho wears sunglasses indoors at night? But then we focus on the task at hand. Me meeting a guy, any guy. And so I think, fuck it. Let's see if a lame pickup line will get me a drink. So I casually look at my reflection in my phone, I make sure I look cute, and then I saunter over, and I assume the position. <laughs> Weakly attempting to get a drink, I say to him, oh my god, are you having trouble getting a drink too? <laughs> I swear, like, she does not like me. And I am so thirsty. <laughs> and he smiles at me, and he's like, oh really? And I'm like, yeah. Do you think you can help me out? And he's all, like, buy you a drink? And I say with no hesitation, I mean, your words, not mine, buddy. <laughs> and I mean, he is into this, right? And I'm like pushing out my tits because it's really hard not to miss them. And he is feeling this, and I am like, about to get that drink when the bartender shows up. Hey, hon, Jamo Ginger, short. 
She thinks that she has saved me from the mysterious sexy danger man. <laughs> and she turns back around and gets back to her very important work. I laugh, he laughs, and my friend is watching, you know, just off in the distance, making sure I'm good. We start talking, and I joke about how I almost got that free drink. And then he's like, I mean, I'll buy you another drink. It's not a problem. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> and before you know it, Asia's back in our space. And she's letting me know that we're moving on to the next place. And then I tell her, the mysterious sex or da sexy danger man has a name. It's Joel. And he's not weird. He's just really high. That's why he's wearing those sunglasses. <laughs> and he's super chill. And then the magic words come out. Can he come too? And then chaos clocks in. The next two hours go the way you think it would go. Club, bar, another club. Or in this case, a kickback. The next thing I remember was saying goodnight to Asia and Marco, and then Joel and I are in the living room, in the dark, bathed in faint moonlight. His eyes are shining, and I think to myself, I really hadn't seen this man's face all night, and I'm just in here risking it all. <laughs> this fool kind of looks like G-Eazy. Wait, there is no reason that G-Eazy would be in Gilroy, the city of garlic. I fade out. And then I tune back in because, like, I think he's sucking on my toes. <laughs> oh, my God, he definitely is sucking on my toes. <laughs> Honestly, I kind of like it. <laughs> Something about him being that free with what he wants to do with me is liberating. <clears throat> but I came to the conclusion that while this new thing is turning me on and is interesting, I am not fucking kissing this man again because I did not prep my little piggies to be marinated by this man's mouth. <laughs> the amazing sex shuts me up and for the next 20 minutes, I'm in ecstasy. Then we are awkwardly cuddling on the couch and I drift off into a drunken sleep and all is well and wet. What the fuck? It's morning, like 7 a.m., and I am on the couch, and I am soaking wet. I look down, and there is a huge puddle of mystery liquid. I get up, and more moisture is just rolling off me, and I start to panic. I sniff my hand. It faintly smells of piss. Uh, it's a good batch, too. It's mostly clear. It could pass as water to the naked eye. I know as long as I clean up the floor with some soap and give the couch a little scrub, it should be enough time for me to shield the evidence, or more importantly, the impending smell. My eyes frantically dart around the room. I know I'm not at Joel's, I know I'm not at Aja's, so this must be a place connected to Marco. I'm looking around, there's pictures of Marco's family, but not current enough to suggest that this is his actual place. It's like pictures of him and his cousins when they're young. There's a cross over the door. <laughs> Old but tasteful furniture. And then I see it. A family portrait of his aunts and uncles as kids. This is his fucking grandma's house. Okay, I just pissed myself. Not in my own bed, not in my own couch, not even Joel's bed or couch, but the grandmother of Marco, the man in bed with my friend next room, in the next room. Luckily, his grandma's in Mexico. I see Joel in the recliner, and he's just snoring asleep, so I know I have some time. He's knocked out. I calculate my next moves, try not to disturb anyone. I go to the hall. I immediately start thinking, damn, this place is kind of small. I am fucking dehydrated. <laughs> Natalie, fucking Danielle, focus. You just pissed on a grandmother's couch. Get it together. <laughs> I find paper towels and get the bulk of the evidence on the floor cleaned up. I mean, it's damning. The pee is like watered down yellow Gatorade. I need to fucking hydrate better. I turn my attention to the couch. It was a lot of pee, so I know it's under there. I also know that if I can get under there a little bit, it'll help with the smell that will eventually intrude this grandma's living room. Thank God she did not have carpet. I need to wake my friend. Miraculously, Joel is still snoring at this point. I knock on the door. Uh, hey girl, I uh, spilled some water on the couch. I just need some towels. Sure girl, give us a second. 
I wait anxiously. The commotion of them waking up wakes Joel. He says good morning and just stays sitting on the couch on his phone, and I ignore him because I have bigger weather problems at this point. <laughs> they come out minutes later, and the actual cleanup begins. I tell my friend where I spilled the water, and we start looking for towels, and then Joel leaves to, you know, go smoke outside, and I just play it cool. I had rolled up my underwear and put them in my purse, and while going to the restroom, used some soap and warm water to freshen up and just go commando. Luckily, I'm wearing a dress. I am still mortified, though, and my best friend can tell that something has gone wrong because I'm bending over all weird, and Joel has, like, left super fast ever since I mentioned the couch, and we are not making eye contact. When Marco leaves to go smoke with Joel, I spill the beans. I tell her, I peed on myself on this couch. <laughs> and she's looking at me wide-eyed. And then she's like, did you pee on him? And I'm like, bitch, I think so. <laughs> and we start cackling. But then we get serious because I start to spiral and I'm like, but I know he knows that I peed on him because he I woke up and he was on the recliner and like, you know, all this stuff. And then she, as a good friend, is hyping me up like, the girl, the pee don't even smell that bad. We're going to be gone before they even know it. And this fool is from Gilroy. Who cares? We laugh, but deep down we know this is some bullshit. So we make a plan for our quick escape, quick escape to safety. We start the exit plan when Joel says, <clears throat> I live nearby. You think I can get a ride? <laughs> My friend effortlessly steps in and says, sure, but you got to sit in the back. <laughs> it is the longest four-minute ride of my life. When we pull up to the apartment, my legs just start moving. I get out and say goodbye as like a weird way to apologize for peeing on this man. And he reaches out for a hug. What? Then he kisses me, like kisses me so hard I forgot about my goddamn toes. Yes. <laughs> and then he says, and I quote, can I get your number? <laughs> and I gave it to him. <laughs> We drive away, and I am confused, but like, whatever. Like Asia said, I'm never going to talk to this man again, right? Wrong. Joel hits me up around August, and after a redeeming, steamy night at a Motel 6, where carefully prepped little piggies indeed got marinated to perfection, he becomes my COVID fuck buddy. As our friendship catches up to how well our naked bodies know each other, he shares with me that he has experienced loss like mine, twice. He taught me how to handle my surprise grief attacks. He had compassion for me when I would get too drunk and cry about missing my boyfriend. And he was honestly becoming one of my favorite people. And it didn't matter to him that I peed on him when we first met. <laughs> Later, I got a call from my friend around the time Joel and I were getting closer, and she told me that Marco was cleaning up his grandma's place and found a pair of piss-soaked boxers hidden in the guest bathroom. One night, a little drunk with courage, I finally asked Joel, what happened that night? And it turns out, I didn't pee on him. That motherfucker peed on me. Oh, we are two for two. That's Vamp first timer, Natalie Gardner, everybody.